Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Friday, March 11, 2016. Commissioner Rodriguez, James, Repenny, and Jacinto are present. President James, we have a quorum. May we start with Bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Chuck Trujillo, Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Sunny Patel, Bureau of Engineering. Russ Trezella, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Lance Luishi with the Bureau of Street Services. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we did not receive any speaker cards under general public comment, nor any of the items for today's regular agenda. We did not receive comments also on the uh, special agenda for today as well. Uh, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and um, you said we did not? That is correct. No okay. speaker cards on the regular and special. Okay. Then before we begin, um, for agenda item number five, um, it's been requested by the council office um, as well as the communications that I've had with, um, with one of the parties for a continuance, uh, one more continuance uh, for two weeks from today to March 25th for the parties to continue working together. Um, I've spoken to both the council office and representatives um, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the applicant. Um, and uh, so I'd like to move it to, for two weeks and just let the parties know that if you actually want to have a hearing before the 25th, as long as we meet the, this, the Brown Act requirements of 72 days, Mr. Campos can get it on the agenda sooner than that. So what did I say, 72 days? Oh, the Brown Act of, well, it, there's been an amendment to the Brown Act. <laughs> the, the 72 hours, uh, uh, we can, uh, three days, 72 hours, uh, we can have it agendized earlier than the two weeks. But for now, we'll schedule it for March 25th, 2016. Any objection? Then that will be continued. Thank you, everyone. Um, going back, uh, our first item of business, the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of Friday, oops, Sorry. The meeting of Wednesday, February 24th, 2016. Is there a second to my motion to approve those meeting minutes by Commissioner Rodriguez? Any objection? Without objection, we'll approve those meeting minutes. Um, no speaker cards, Mr. Campos. Let's go ahead and close general public comment. Our first item of business um, after the approval of the meeting minutes, agenda item number one, Bureau of Engineering, Council District 8, recommending the board authorize the city engineer to utilize the construction services contract to issue task work orders to the contractor for an amount not to exceed $650,000 in connection with the Manchester Pumping Plant Capital Improvement Program Pumping Plant 601 Improvements Project. Mr. Cirillo on agenda item number one. Good morning, Mike Cirillo with the Bureau of Engineering. This is an authority to issue task work orders to the Cisco contractor, which is Murray Company, uh, for pump plant 601 um, VFD replacement. This is the fourth largest pump plant in the city. It treats about uh, 20, well, it doesn't treat, but it pumps 22 million gallons of wastewater per day. There are four pumps with VFDs. Uh, the VFDs allow us to ramp the pumps up and down um, uh, to any speed we want. So as new pumps are needed to come on, it, it, it saves energy by ramping pumps up versus having to run the pumps at full throttle. Um, so this project is to replace the VFDs and do some electrical work uh, because the pumps, I'm sorry, because the VFDs are, are about uh, 20 years old. This also has provisions for an emergency bypass in, in the event that we need to, if we lose some pumps while we're doing the work, we can make sure the flow uh, does not spill. Uh, Cisco is recommended due to the retrofit nature of the work. It's, uh, it's a job that has to be sequenced one VFD at a time. So it's, uh, it's a perfect Cisco opportunity uh, for that type of work. And we will encourage the Cisco contractor to outreach to the various uh, BIP categories to try to bring in some, some good sub-consultants to assist with this project. Uh, BOS has replaced, uh, already replaced some pumps on their own and some valves. So essentially by replacing the VFDs uh, and what they've already done, we'll essentially have a brand new uh, a pump station and should last us uh, another 20, 25 years. Uh, I'll take any questions. Any questions? Commissioner Jacinto. Thank you, President James. Mike, thanks for your presentation. So if, as we sequence uh, the, uh, taking them offline, the drives will be able to still handle the load, correct? Yes, uh, I understand that they operate only two of the pumps at any one time. 
So we're allowed to, we'll be able to take one off, offline. They'd like to keep one as a standby just in case they lose one of the two that are operating. So um, that being the case, there won't be any interruptions to flow. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Rodriguez? So <clears throat> previously when they were installed, were they all uh, installed at the same time? So they're all on the same lifespan? Yes, oh. yeah. Yeah, they're all the same age. Okay. Twins. Quadruplets, I Quadruplets, guess. Quadruplets, yeah. Four, then, yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else? President James, if I could, Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. The motion or the report that's before you is to approve the task orders to a contractor for Cisco. However, the report currently does not indicate which contractor that is. So to make ease of the uh, encumbrance process and also the payment process to the selected vendor, I would like to ask uh, Mike if you can read into the record who the contractor may be that's going to be uh, selected for this task order. Yeah, I think I said in the uh, opening of my uh, statement or report that it was Murray Company is a Cisco contractor, and I'll send you the contract information. Great. Thank you, Mike. Should that be as the amended? The recommendation would be to uh, adopt okay. the report as, re as amended. So, uh, so the Commissioner Asinto would uh, made a motion to adopt agenda item number one as amended uh, pursuant to the uh, discussion we just had. Is there a second by Commissioner Rodriguez? Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number one as amended. Any problem sending it forthwith? We'll send number one forthwith. Thank you, uh, Mike. I see you're here on agenda item number two as well. I'll just stay here, yeah. Bureau of Engineering, Council District 11. Recommending the board authorize the city engineer to issue deductive change order number 72 to USS Cal Builders Incorporated in the amount of $1,454,868.87 and issue the final closeout change order number 80 in the amount of $1,050,000 and close out the project in connection with the Hyperion Treatment Plant Digester Gas Compressor Facility Project. Go ahead, sir. Good morning, Mike Cirillo, Bureau of Engineering. In June 2010, a contract was awarded to USS Cal for demolition work, construction of a new compressor building, a new electrical building, uh, and new compressors, uh, and integration into the distributed control system. The total contract amount was $26.8 million. The compressors are used to compress the digester gas and then push it through our desulfurization facility to remove the sulfur. Uh, currently, the gas then it goes over to the scattergood facility, but ultimately, as you are aware, we're going to be sending that gas over to the DGUP uh, project to, uh, um, to generate power. The existing compressors were 25 years old when we replaced them. Um, the um, report covers two issues. One is a credit for the allowance items. Uh, when we issue a contract, we often put allowance items in there for items that we're not sure exactly what these items will cost. For example, inspections, city inspections, permits, startup, and then as the work is needed or permits are, are required to be paid, we issue allowance orders against those uh, items. But then at the end of the contract, any unspent money is uh, credited back to the city. So that's what the first part of this report is for, and it's, it's for a credit of $1.4 million to come back to the city for allowances. The second item relates to the late completion of the project, which was about three years late uh, as related to the compressor packages. Before the project was bid, we obtained board approval to sole source JJ Crew. Uh, JJ Crew was the only uh, packager, we call them packagers, they take the compressors and they build and engineer the skids. Uh, they were the only approved uh, packager for what's known as the Solaire brand compressor. Solaire is the, uh, the uh, brand of compressor that the Bureau of Sanitation wanted to use. So we came to board and we obtained approval to use JJ Crew as the sole source packager for Solaire compressors. Um, after the compressors uh, were delivered on site and um, they were put into service, there were some technical and performance issues with the compressors. Uh, we had some electrical rework to do on the compressors. The welds didn't pass inspection. They had to be redone. Um, there was some fine-tuning uh, that we had to do on the compressors, which resulted and contributed to, to some of the delay. Uh, because we were a sole, because we sole sourced the city, so had sole sourced these compressors or these packages, that we were responsible for a portion of, of that delay. Uh, there was also some direct costs that the contractor was claiming that we owed them for change, miscellaneous change order work, which we had rejected and told the contractor we, the city was not going to pay for those. So we entered into negotiations. The contractor submitted a claim of $11.1 million uh, for all these issues I just mentioned. We entered into settlement talks and negotiations with the contractor uh, for about uh, six months. 
and we finally reached a settlement of one million fifty thousand dollars and we believe that's a fair and reasonable settlement considering the, the three-year delay and the city's uh, uh, responsibility for those delays. With the assi assistance of the city attorney's office, uh, we've uh, drafted a settlement agreement and we had all parties sign off on the settlement agreement which resolves all project issues uh, full and final. Now there was an ongoing litigation uh, between JJ Crew and USS Cal. And uh, I understand from the city attorney's office that they have settled uh, pending the outcome of today's uh, board meeting. Um, so I know there was some concern that potentially JJ Crew could come and, and back and, and maybe litigate against the city later. But uh, I understand that USS Cal and JJ Crew have reached an, uh, a, a settlement. Uh, so um, hopefully that will you know, prevent them from coming back and, uh, and suing the city at some later date uh, once we um, uh, approve this item. So um, that concludes my report. I'll take any questions. Um, well, I have a question quickly, Mike, for the city attorney. So, Mr. Jordan, uh, from the city attorney's perspective, does this um, end the ex any potential exposure to the city from, um, as we can tell from this transaction, for lack of a better term? As it relates to the contract and the uh, construction work and the obligation to pay, how much is owed into that contract, this, this resolves that. Um, there was an accident on this work site, uh, the contractor and the settlement agreement. Uh, the settlement agreement re reiterates that any uh, case brought against the city based on that accident, the contractor is obligated to indemnify us. And this contract and the settlement agreement preserves that. So we, we recommend going forward with that. So that was my question. There's the, the settlement agreement addresses it. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, let me. I, I didn't mention the. Like, if I could elaborate a little bit about that, there was a death on the project, uh, and that's what you're referring to. Uh, a USS Cal employee actually uh, was killed. Um, uh, so uh, the uh, there's a separate lawsuit that the um, false work company that erected some of the scaffolding for the project uh, has sued the city. Um, this agreement. Uh, excludes that death incident. It's not included as part of this settlement. It's specifically excluded. This only resolves the construction delays and, and extra work for change orders. We did not settle the death lawsuit as part of this. Uh, right. This, but this, this encompasses everything related to the contract exclusive of what would happen there. Yes, yes. That's why I tried to distinguish between the two. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is there, uh, is there a second to my motion? Any, any other questions? Is there a second to my motion that we adopt this agenda item? Uh, by, by Commissioner Sinto, any objection? Cortez. Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number two. Any problems sending it forthwith? We'll send number two forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. I see, Mike, that you're here on number three I as am. well. I am. Um, number three, Bureau of Engineering, recommending the board authorize the city engineer to issue a task for solicitation number 51 to CDM Smith Incorporated with a budget authority of $1 million, including contingency to provide wastewater program public and community involvement in project mitigation. Mr. Cirillo on number three. Good morning, Mike Cirillo, Bureau of Engineering. Um, as you're aware, the PAO leads all uh, community outreach efforts for wastewater-related projects. This includes projects at the wastewater treatment plants as well as the collection system. They take the lead in groundbreaking and grand opening events, uh, such as ribbon cuttings. They also handle speaker media training, social media campaign, graphic design, and website and video videography. The PAO relies on consultants to bring special expertise and to support their staff in these efforts. There's currently a task order that's in place to provide support for the PAO. However, it's quickly exhausting funds. At the time that we established this task order, uh, it was based on an anticipated workload for wastewater a few years back. Since then, the, the workload has picked up, and um, we have uh, spent the funds quicker than anticipated. So rather than amend that existing uh, task order, we decided to go out and uh, compete for a new task order, and that's exactly what we did. We issued a, a new task order for uh, proposals back in November. We received two proposals uh, for this, this, uh, this task order, number 51. BAO, B, BOE and the PAO evaluated the, the two task orders based on the selection criteria in the task order, and CDM was selected as the top ranked firm. CDM provided a more qualified team, better experience, and a more diverse team of sub consultants. 
Uh, the costs for both were, were fairly comparable. Uh, CDM is also pledging an MBE amount of 39% and WB of 6%. So, um, therefore, BO, uh, BOE is recommending that we award Task Order 51 to CDM for an amount not to exceed $1 million. And these, these funds uh, we're anticipating would last us until mid-2017, which is the expiration date for this contract. Uh, before that date, we anticipate having a new five-year on-call contract in place, and then we can go out with a brand new outreach toss for the next five-year period. That concludes my report. Uh, if you'd like Elena to come up and talk a little bit about PAO efforts, I, I can have her come up. Uh, Elena, Ms. Stern, welcome. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, as Mike has indicated, the work of our consultants has sorry, Thank you. significantly complemented and supplemented the work of the PAO. Um, they have developed and cultivated real good relationships, strong relationships with the communities that we serve and have really been an asset to us um, both in continuing our efforts and promoting our efforts but also jumping in when things get a little challenging. Um, and so we've, we've really taken, uh, we've taken advantage of the, the contract and really utilized them, I think, in a significant way. Moving forward, we'd like to use them even more to promote the, the overall work of the department and the Bureau of Sanitation and really uh, ramp up the efforts to, to inform and educate the public about what we're doing and how, um, and how we're serving them. So we hope that we can move forward with CDM Smith in this way. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Commissioner Rodriguez? Mike, I, I just have a question. Sure. Um, how many uh, responses? We had two proposals. The other firm was SOMIS. Uh, we, we did uh, reach out and tried to encourage more uh, proposals. I know two, two is not a large number, considering we have 21 firms on the on-call list. But this is very specialized niche type work, and uh, and we didn't find that many firms were outreach. The outreach work is very specialized. No, the, the, this, the, yeah, this type of PAO support work is is kind of specialized. I mean, it's I guess with the primes on the on our on call list, we were able to only get two proposals. Um, so, but we did make an effort to encourage firms to submit, and on the next. A uh, five-year contract, which would be a larger contract, will make an extra effort to try to bring in more uh, participants into that process. Commissioner Repenning? Um, I was just wondering whether there was any consideration to structuring this, uh, uh, not necessarily going out to the on-call engineering list, but actually doing a, a, a process where you would be reaching out directly to people who specialize in this, in this work that may be we would have gotten more. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we have a list of outreach firms. This, because this is wastewater related work, this seemed like the best choice to solicit proposals was through the wastewater on call. If there was a PAO outreach list, a separate list, that would probably be something that could be considered, but there is no such list. So this was really our only option to try to solicit interest was go through the wastewater list unless there's another suggestion. No, I mean, I think I'm, I'm okay with this now. I think it's something to think about, though, and to, to get to Commissioner Rodriguez's point. I, I don't think that this work is particularly specialized. You're talking about doing mailings, going door to door, signage, meetings. I mean, there are, there are a lot of um, good folks in L.A. Who, who do this type of work, and so just to make sure that we're getting really good competitive process. I appreciate that idea very much. And moving forward, I'd like to try to develop a different list of folks that are expert in PR and community relations and not necessarily uh, have an expertise in the technicalities of wastewater and sewage and other types of, of industry issues. So I, I very much appreciate that approach. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. Um, is Bavin a database that has individuals like that perhaps on it um, for selection for the Bureau, the Bavin network? I would presume it does. I can't say for sure. Uh, there's probably an interest code for, for that type of work. Do you use Bavin often in that kind of uh, search? Well, so these, these contracts are, are uh, put in place. We do go through Bavin to get the contracts in okay. place. The task orders, individual task orders, don't go on Bavin because at that point, only the firms on the on-call list and their subs can participate in the proposal process. Got it. Now, in terms of the subs that are being proposed, are any of them uh, performing the task of some of the public relations objectives you have? 
uh, for yeah, those? Yes, we have uh, we have five five subs on this uh, task order. We have Dakota Communications, Murakawa Communications, Freeth Miraz, Harris and Company, and the Robert Group. And um, as I mentioned, we have 39% uh, MBE and 6% WB out of this task order. So it's it's pretty significant work will be done by the subconsultants. So basically, your MBEs and WBEs um, are coming obviously from a diverse pool, and this is not federally funded project either, is it? It is not. It is a uh, ratepayer. SCM funding. Uh huh. Great. So you know, um, obviously. Uh, we don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the of the good, um, but in terms of what we have been able to accomplish, uh, at least we've made some uh, effort towards inclusion uh, on the subs, and I think for that you need to be commended uh, in terms of that selection. Great, thank you, Commissioner Sento. Thank you, President James. You know I'm supportive of Commissioner Repenning's um, request to look at the future, to open it up. With you in place, Elena, there's a much better opportunity for us to run a, a greater and deeper uh, a community engagement program. So I would, I would support that. The next opportunity we have, we go out uh, to take care of the department-wide things and really find specialized people. On their wastewater, you're going to get people who do wastewater. Not that the groups here cannot. Uh, it's a much more competitive field if we open it up at the next one uh, to look at a broader field and a much more comprehensive program. You know, the numbers are good, 39 and 6, so, you know, we're doing good here, but we could do better. Thank you. Commissioner Rodriguez. Elena, can you please speak to the limitations in your staff capacity to provide this service and why it's, just to, to put it on the record in terms of what your staff, your staffing situation is and the technical expertise that this is going to provide, because, I mean, I, you know, I always talk about a much more competitive process and you know the two gives me tremendous pause yeah. um, because it is there are a number of uh, firms out there that are available to do this type this level of work and so I understand the the necessity and the timing and you know all the things that we're juggling at the same time but I just I, I want to better have I want to have a better explanation as to your staffing limitations and capacity and mm -hmm. what this will provide uh, given the circumstances that you're experiencing. Sure, thank you. Um, well, currently we have a number of vacancies, and I know that that hasn't always been the case over the years. Um, we, we currently have uh, two principal PR reps uh, that are vacant, and we have one specialist position that is vacant. Um, we have um, one uh, public information director, one position that is not being fully utilized um, as much as I would like. And so given those, those, the absence of actual staff people available, I'm utilizing the current staff in a very significant way. Um, the work that, the, the, that would be required out in the field would take my staff from City Hall, and it would require them to spend significant time out in the communities that we're trying to communicate with. Um, right now, that would be a hardship for me because I'm sort of pushing my team right now to get the work done, um, and so we're, we're working hard to get what we need to do done. Uh, ultimately, I'd like to be more proactive. Um, I'm not in a place to do that right now. So what the, what the consultants have been able to do is have a presence in the community when we can't always. Um, for example, I've got one of the consultants, subcontractors, working very closely now with the Chamber of Commerce at LAX and the, um, the uh, Playa del Rey and Westchester communities, and really sort of, uh, that's a new relationship. And so Trisha Murakawa has been able to have a presence and she's been able to um, start to build that relationship so that we're top of mind when they have events and when they're looking to connect business entities together. That's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm utilizing the consultants for, that I can't really use my full-time in-house employees right now. Ultimately, if, if we could and when we're fully staffed, perhaps we can depend a little bit less on consultants. Well, what I'd like to also see come as a result of this, since we're going to be exercising and utilizing these resources in this way, is that you better walk out with a very good community contact list mm -hmm. to ensure that this is not something that we're going to always be dependent upon. Right. Um, because these are, if we're going to be utilizing resources in this way to help make meaningful contacts in the community, then we need to know they should be retained by us. 
Right. So I'd like to see that become part of what the expectation is and deliverable uh, as a part of these services so that we have points of contacts that we can reach out to mm -hmm. because though I, I totally understand community engagement, uh, meaningful community engagement requires a lot of work, a lot of, you know, there's, there's a building of street credibility and, and being out there and being accessible is very, very important. Uh, and so, you know, if we're going to uh, retain the use of consultants in this way, then we need to make sure that we retain the contacts and, and the, uh, the outreach efforts, the results of that, we, we should be the firm owners of that information. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Is that a motion, Commissioner Davis? Yes. Uh, uh, I'll second it. Any objection? Uh, the motion was to adopt agenda item number three. I seconded it. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number three. Uh, thank you uh, both. Thank you for the discussion, colleagues. Um, any problem sending it forthwith? We'll send number three forthwith. Agenda item number four, requested contract award, Bureau of Engineering, Contract Administration, and Sanitation, Council District 11, Venice Wastewater Collection Yard Demolition, recommending the board find the first low bidder, TNM Projects Incorporated, doing business as TNM Construction to be non-responsive and award a contract in the amount of $459,000 to national demolition contractors. Uh, Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number four. Why were they non-responsive? They had a low bid with a bunch of AKAs, T&M construction. So they, they were the first low bidder, but they're non-responsive. Is this another thing like Colich and Sons? Are we going to go down that road again like Colich and Sons? You send an email, somebody that doesn't respond to it a day late, and then you give it to your friend. Is that what it is? What were the differences in the numbers between the low response bidder and the winning of 459? You don't put that down. But we know it's in CD11. We know who runs CD11. You don't have jurisdiction over CD11. Mike Bonin owns CD11. He's the fee simple owner of CD11. Can't get nothing done without Mike Bonin. And Mike Bonin's not here. Is anybody from Mike Bonin's office here? Y yes. But they're not going to come in and talk about this because probably somebody's a campaign donor, right? Did you see on the Ethics Commission? Or is any, any of these parties any campaign donors to CD11? You don't know. And you don't care. You just don't care, do you? You don't care about anything. It's just money. It's like Margaret Thatcher said, you can keep spending other people's money until it runs out. That's all you're doing. You're just spending other people's money. God, I'd love to do that. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't anybody love to do that? Wouldn't you like to have a $4 billion account and you could just spend other people's money and just never stop spending? Spend, 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 spend. It's like the other day I showed you those pigs, and that's all it is. Pigs on top of pigs. Two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Brad Jensen. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Brad Jensen. I'm with the wa uh, Wastewater Conveyance Engineering Division with the Bureau of Engineering. Uh, this project will uh, award a contract to demolish the existing Venice Wastewater Collection Yard. Uh, this facility has not been used for a number of years and has become a nuisance over, over time. Uh, this project will remove all existing structures to the ground level and install a wrought iron fence around the perimeter to uh, protect the site. The contract duration for this project is estimated at 90 days. Uh, the current on-call demolition contract uh, will expire next week on the 16th, and so due to the expiration of this contractor's list, the Bureau of Engineering recommends that the board issue a uh, unique and separate contract number for this project at the same time. And Mr. Jordan has uh, been briefed and concurred with this recommendation. Uh, this project was advertised under the local business program and as such the, the low bidder 
national demolition contractor that submitted the lowest bid. TNM can, however, they are not a local business enterprise. So, just uh, Brad, just so for the record, so national demolition, which for today's terminology is the second low bid. Correct. So it's actually four hundred and fifty-nine thousand dollars. Yes. And uh, the TNM project, which is the the party you're asking us to d- determine is non-responsive, is four hundred and seventy-seven thousand five hundred ninety dollars. Correct. And, and it's the low bid preference issue that resulted in the change in numbers. Correct. Go ahead with the, okay. and, and summarize that for us. So, so based upon that, uh, for evaluation purposes, Office of Contract Compliance uh, would, would indicate that TNM construction was the apparent low bidder. The city had established an, the MBWB OB subcontractor outreach program for this project as part of the request for qualifications uh, when they established the on-call list. Uh, the all, all pre-qualified contractors were required to demonstrate a good faith effort and compliance with this program. The MBWB anticipated participa- participation level for this project was set at 8% MB and 3% WB. Uh, the contractor submitting bids from uh, subcontractors that are not on the, the contractor's list of approved subcontractors may result in the contractor's bid being deemed non-responsive. The project was also advertised with the board's mandatory subcontracting minimum of 15 percent. TNM, the first low bidder after the local business program percentage was applied, fell to list in their bid proposal only those contract, subcontractors that were listed on their uh, Schedule A. Therefore, it's recommended that their bid be deemed non-responsive. During the review of the bid proposal, uh, Office of Contract Compliance noted that uh, TNM had listed a subcontractor for iron gates and fencing that was not on their approved list. Uh, this they did submit the supplemental outreach documentation uh, at the same time that the bids were received on December 22nd. In response to a request for clarification, TNM responded that during the pre-bid meeting that they were told that they could solicit any iron fence company to perform the work. They also noted that the bid was due in seven days uh, from that meeting, so proper outreach would be, would, could not be performed. Uh, Office of Contract Compliance, they consulted with Bureau of Engineering staff uh, about what happened at the pre-bid meeting and were informed that BOE staff had had informed all of the contractors that they could solicit the wrought iron fence companies to perform the work as per the bid proposal. Moreover, BOE staff extended the bid period from the 10th to the 22nd that would allow the contractors sufficient time to do their outreach uh, through BAVN. With respect to the listing of the subcontractors, the bid proposal documents state that the bidder must solicit and select companies that are listed in the original uh, 2006 Schedule A or on its approved updated Schedule A. The good faith effort list of potential MBWB OBE subcontractors and suppliers that have been approved by the Bureau of Contract Administration prior to bids being submitted for this project. And failure to properly obtain and um, list subcontractors on this could, uh, may result in their bid being deemed non responsive. Uh, based upon this information, uh, contract compliance staff concluded that uh, Bureau of Engineering extending the the bid due date allowed the contractor sufficient time to uh, perform this outreach and to uh, submit the documentation in a timely manner for review and approval of the bids uh, proposal uh, prior, or prior to the bids being submitted for the project. Therefore, it is staff's recommendation that TNM's uh, bid proposal be deemed non-responsive uh, for bid listing a subcontractor that is not listed on their approved Schedule A. And uh, as a note, uh, National, the second lowest bidder after the local business preference uh, was applied, uh, did meet the, all of the requirements of the uh, proposal. So therefore, the Bureau of Engineering does recommend that uh, we award this contract to uh, National Demolition Contractors. Brad, do you indicate, the report indicates that National had 
pledged the 0% MBE and 0% WB. Correct. TNM pledged the same yes. zeros, correct? Yes. Um, any reason as to why zero was the universal number in that? Res- On this one, I, I don't know. You know, the, both of the contractors, they only uh, bid listed one, one contractor, one subcontractor, and that was for uh, construction of the fence. Um, again, we're you know we're. And they're going to do the rest of the work. Yeah, and they're they're doing the rest of the work. Commissioner Asinto. Thank you, uh, Brad. Does T and M? Do we have a history with them? Did have they submitted before? Have they done any work? It says national, but previous work record for T and M? Have they? As far as I know, they they have. This is a this uh, on call contract has been in place since I believe 2006. So they do. So and so they, I, I'm sure that they have done. Work so it's for us. reasonable to assume that they yeah. would have understood the bidding process and yes. should have followed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So and again, that was reemphasized during the the pre bid meeting that they had to comply with all the terms of their their contract. Thank and you. And the bid proposal. Any, anything further? Any further questions, uh, Commissioner Davis? The task that is being performed in this particular proposal is, you said, fencing. Is it? Well, what the there's a, an existing uh, wastewater collection uh, service yard that hasn't been used for a number of years. And so there's a number of buildings on site and other, other uh, improvements. What this uh, contract will do, will we'll demo, demo, uh, demolish the existing structures to the ground level and basically clear the site from all improvements. And then we're going to be constructing a eight-foot wrought iron fence around the perimeter that will secure that facility. Uh, there's, as I mentioned, there's been a number of cases uh, recently where you, you have individuals going in there. They're using this as a temporary shelter, possibly starting fires, other other activities that require uh, the police and fire department and Bureau of Sanitation to respond. Sure. In terms of diversity here and the inclusion program. The data of individuals and contacts that we get from this is on the on-call list. Is that correct? Yeah, this is on the on-call Are list. Are there any people who fit the profile of minority business, women-owned business, um, di- uh, dis- uh, disadvantaged business on that on-call list, to your knowledge? Uh, that I don't know. That what, what I did uh, when we briefed President James yesterday, one of the things that uh, came up was uh, you know, TNM Construction is certified as a local business. They're also certified as a, an EBE, uh, a WB, an SBE with the Harbor Department, as well as a VSBE. Uh, National Demolition, their certification is an SBE with the City of LA, uh, WBE, and they're, they're also certified as an LBE with the Harbor Department, but not with the City of LA. I see. So they're, they're both based out of San Pedro. And in terms of the inclusion program, the task of putting the fence up, uh, to your knowledge, is a task that probably is within the scope of those who fit into the category of minority business, women business, or... It it could, yes. So that is a possibility. Yeah. Uh, Now, it's not probable that we have any other recourse in terms of our discussion. Uh, I realize these are not federal funds, so we're not compelled, and so I'm aware of that. Yet at the same time, we have a culture in the city of Los Angeles, and your bureau is certainly pretty good about remembering this, that whenever possible that we can have some inclusion, uh, we'd like to have that. And I don't know if these companies have done work with us before. Uh, There was absolutely no pledge. I don't know what we can do about that uh, whatsoever, but certainly it would have been great to have had some kind of opportunity, uh, given that fences and putting fences up is something that is possible. So I don't know yeah. what we can do about it, but I certainly felt compelled as a. Yeah, we always encourage our, our contractors to outreach, you know, do their good faith effort outreach. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Commissioner Jacinto has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number four. Um, I'll second it. Any objection? Without objection, we'll uh, adopt number four. Any problem setting number four forthwith? Do we need to do anything on the amendment regarding the additional issue, the timing issue raised uh, by Mr. Jensen, Mr. Jordan? Um, do you mean the timing of when this, the... There was a timing time. issue raised at the beginning of your presentation. Well, the, 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 
the recommendation here is also to issue the this this work under a unique contract we're covered. number. So we're covered with the recommendation. Yes. Okay. It, it's included as recommendation Fine. number three. Thank you. I just wanted, uh, when you in your presentation, I didn't know if you added anything to it beyond what's here that I missed. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we're covered here. Then, uh, without objection, uh, we'll adopt agenda item number four. We can send it forthwith. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Agenda item number five. Continue. What? Oh, it was continued. Thank you. Agenda item number six. Uh, the city clerk has transmitted the action of a city council authorizing the board to execute a proposed personal services contract with USA Waste of California, Inc., doing business uh, as waste management for landfill disposal uh, services uh, of grit and screenings. Uh, this is uh, the return of action of the board simply for execution. Um, Mr. Let's see. I don't have a card on number six, so Mr. Mr. Campos, uh, is there a se second to my motion that we adopt agenda item number six by Commissioner Davis? Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number six forthwith. Agenda item number seven, Robertson's has transmitted the release of a stop notice in the amount of $1,104.72 in connection with the LAPD Police Academy Project replacement training facility and administrative building and cafe of four shooting ranges renovation project. The contractor is Kemp Brothers Construction. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number seven. Fuck the police, that's right. There they are, right in, what do they do? What do your cops do? That's what they do. Harass homeless, pull people over, write tickets, raise revenue. So that you can give them a million one hundred and four dollars in payback money for some stupid bullshit. They need another shooting range? You think they need another place to go practice shooting? You need to take the guns out of their hands. They're psycho fucking pads. They're fucking crazy, these people, okay? And you're giving them more places to shoot? They already know how to shoot. Every one of those cops knows how to shoot. If you're black and in your redevelopment zone and you're alone, they turn the camera off, you get shot. You're sitting in your car minding your own business. You get shot. If they have time, they'll bring their puppy dog unit, the canine unit, and bite you on the ass, and then they'll shoot you. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. Every dollar that goes to these cocksuckers, that's what you're doing. Another killer is being born with these cadets and all this fucking shit. And you need another million one hundred and four thousand dollars? Have you seen that place over there? It's like the Taj fucking Mahal over there across from Dodgers Stadium. You know who can pay for this? The Dodgers can pay for this. They get all that free security. They get four or five million in free security. Make the Dodgers pay for this. The Dodgers own the police department up there in Chavez Ravine. Get the Dodgers to pay for it. But no, you're going to spend other people's money till it runs out. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spindler. Is there a second to my motion that we receive agenda item number seven forthwith by Commissioner Rodriguez? Any objection? Without objection, number seven will be received forthwith. Agenda item number eight. Um, BAS Engineering Incorporated has transmitted a stop notice in the amount of $1,553.85 against Solex Engineers and Electronics in connection with the LAPD Metropolitan Division Police Facility Project, the contractor Sananian Development Incorporated. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number eight. It's too dark. I can't okay, see then I'm sorry. So you're refusing to identify yourself? No, I just don't appreciate the fact that we've got some mental health issues that we're dealing with, and then you're trying to intervene by <coughs> injecting yourself into this situation. 
I just kind of find it really disrespectful. That's okay. That's right. See, all of you forgot. You forgot when you were private citizens, all of you growing up, the black ones, the Latinos, the Filipinos. You forgot. You forgot these bastards, what they did to you all your lives. Now, you're building all of their infrastructure. The people that persecute your communities and you're building the infrastructure. I visited the Metropolitan Division. I was arrested there and held for 13 and a half hours from November 10th to November 11th. I visited this place. And it's a disgusting fucking shithole. It looks like it was built in the 1960s in East Berlin. Everything that you're putting into that place, they're stealing the money. Substandard toilets, substandard this, substandard that. Locks that don't work, elevators that don't open. What the fuck are they spending this money on? They're spending this money on nothing. They're pocketing the money. They're not spending this money. And that's the reason why you need to stop giving these monies to these fucking cops. Stop giving them money. So good. You're going to stop notice for a million five five three. That's a good start. So let's do more than that. Shut the LAPD budget down. No more public work money for anything for the LAPD. You make Charlie Beck go to his pimp, Steve Soboroff. Steve Soboroff is the pimp daddy banker of the L.A. Police Two Commission minutes. and the LAPD. Get Steve Soboroff to pay for this. He's got the money. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Again, is there a second to my motion regarding this stop notice in the amount of $1,553.85 uh, that we receive um, and file by Commissioner Jacinto? Uh, any objection? Any problems? Uh, no objection. Any problems sending it forthwith? We'll send number eight forthwith. Agenda item number nine, oral report, continued from March 7th, 2016 to today, Bureau of Street Services, regarding an update on city trees. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on number nine. Did he pass? I'm sorry, Mr. Spindler. I said you have a card on number nine. Trees. <clears throat> You're going to have an advisement oral report on city trees. No. You're going to have a report on cutting city trees down. The trees are fine. They're all over the place. They've been here a long time. Every one of these trees is saying, Please don't cut me down. I provide shade. I provide protection against crime. There's a 74% drop in crime in areas that have large forestations of trees that are street trees. You're cutting them down all over the goddamn place. Every time a developer goes to one of our 15 city councilmen, which one of them, by the way, is over in the John Ferraro building there, Mitchell Farrell, he's hosting a bunch of Irishmen. Did you know that? They're over there next door. He took the whole city chamber over for his... Irish friends. That's where they're at over there. So, he's over there cutting more trees down. You're a developer. You want a wider driveway? You cut the tree down. You're supposed to protect the trees. But things have changed here. Now, Kevin the Cutter James is going to cut all the trees down for the developers. So, if you're a developer, just go to Kevin the Cutter and he will cut the tree down for you. Free of charge, public street services, other people's money. The developer doesn't even have to spend anything. He just goes to Kevin the Cutter James and says, I want those nine trees cut down, and it will be done. You guys never reverse a decision. Anything they want to cut down, as long as one of these city puppets comes up here with a badge and a title and says, I think the tree is unsafe, it's dead, it's buried, it's cut. So just keep cutting them trees down. Two minutes. Sure, sooner or later, we'll look like Tel Aviv in the summer. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Mr. Tyson, on agenda item number nine. Good morning, sir. Good morning, President James, commissioners, uh, executive officer, bureau representatives, and the city attorney. 
It's an exciting time, actually, right now for the Urban Forestry Division. At one point, uh, we had over 200 employees a few years ago, and we were all the way down to about 90. <clears throat> right now, we have 104 employees. We are starting to uh, fill positions. We're interviewing for tree surgeons in a couple of weeks. We've hired a couple of new superintendent ones, and we're moving forward with some other supervisor positions. The division is working with all the council offices as well as neighborhood councils to improve customer service for all. The new implementation of the customer response uh, management system known as the CRM is also helping with customer services. And thanks to the mayor, the innovation fund has enabled us to, this is what's very exciting, um, to implement tablets in the field for our inspectors and emergency response units. What this has done is, it's quite simple. An inspector would go out and he would spend all day long inspecting 10 to 15 locations and the next day he would spend all day inputting those locations in the computer. Now it's real time at the site, he inputs all the information therefore cutting down a whole other day. So I'd like to say that the, the tablet is like having another person to me because it cuts down a whole other day's worth of time doing exactly what he did in one day, took two before. So this is very exciting. And the um, while they're at the uh, location and they're doing an inspection, in real time they can see new requests that come in right at that moment, which may be a block away, two blocks away, and they can go right there and, and do the inspections immediately. Cuts down on a lot of, of time, which is cost savings, and uh, the response is much greater. And how, how I will uh, put that into uh, uh, this kind of uh, cost savings is when we do emergency work, we set up the uh, metric system to uh, see what our response times were in the beginning. We've lowered those response times. Uh, during fiscal year 14, 15, the average response time, even during high emergencies or, or normal emergencies, all averaged together was less than one day. That's the initial response to secure the location. We also have $500,000 of on-demand money that came out of our budget, which was, uh, is being utilized by all CDs, all 15, which is a total of $33,333. So each CD can pick and choose work that they would like done in certain areas they feel it's necessary while they wait for the uh, contracted trees to be trimmed in other areas. Mr. Tyson, I would only ask just one thing. Um, uh, we in in talk inside of government, we use lots of acronyms, and we, we make a public record. People listen. You used CRM earlier, um, CDs, council districts. Um, I, we all do it, but in a public presentation, I always try and find ways to avoid it because there are lots of people listening that, that uh, don't work with the everyday acronyms that we do. So Cor thank you. Yes. As I stated before, the uh, customer response... Uh, response management system known as the CRM. And CDs, uh, meaning the council districts, all 15. Uh, we, we came up with a number of $220 per tree, which was uh, during fiscal year 14, 15, um, when we did this the first time and um, showing that we could uh, closely compete with the contractors. Um, and right now, uh, we've trimmed over 1,500 trees, and the cost of the, those trees right now, the average is about $152 this, this fiscal year. So as far as the contracts go, uh, the general fund contracts have, have gone out to bid, and all except CD11, Council District 11, were put out as a three-year contract with the first year to be awarded and the city having the option to renew uh, the second and third years, similar to the landscape maintenance contracts. All, all bids for these contracts will be Mr. Tyson, just uh, the reason, uh, I know that the Bureau's wanted to do that for some time, um, so it's maybe Elaborate pilot on that project a little bit. in essence, but 
the, what's the, the, what was the reason that the Bureau wanted to do that? It's all about trying to uh, do the trees in the same fiscal year that the money's allocated for and also to uh, trim the trees in a better time of year, meaning a season, due to the trees can have more stress on them during the summer than in winter months. And Get a better like result? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So on the contracts, um, the landscape maintenance contracts have been prepared to go out to bid with 3 million, 440, over 3 million of unimproved median islands to be added for the first time. Uh, UFD anticipates that all the fiscal year 15, 16 contracts, including general fund and street lighting maintenance assessment fund, tree trimming contracts, and the landscape maintenance contracts will be awarded prior to the end of the fiscal year and will begin shortly thereafter. Uh, with the Parsons team in place, our uh, reports with B permits are returning back to an appropriate time frame to complete. Thank the board for that. UFD will be involved in Arbor Day tomorrow uh, in the Vermont corridor. Uh, the mayor will be showing up, and we will be participating in all the events that we used to participate in. But for a long time, uh, we were not able to with the l a low... Uh, employees and, and resources, but we're, we're coming back. It's very exciting, and um, we look forward to a new fiscal year. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Um, a, a couple of things um, just from myself before I go to my colleagues on the front of mind. I do want to thank you and the Urban Forestry Division, a division that through the budget crisis years was decimated um, as far as staffing. Um, and the kind of demands that have been put on the Bureau and the Division over the ensuing years, only to reach a point where we needed additional CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, we needed additional CEQA review. It has been a process that we've worked on with the members from the Community Advisory Council, uh, uh, the legal community that uh, has represented environmental groups, including Mr. Krakow and, and his clients, um, worked on a team effort to come up with a, uh, the environmental review process that has enabled us to, um, to move forward without um, uh, so many of the legal challenges that might have otherwise resulted. Um, that would have cost the taxpayers money, that would have slowed down everything even more than the review process itself. Uh, it took some time, there was a lot of hard work, but we've ended up with a, with a much better policy and I do appreciate the time of, of the division um, in contributing to that. I also am happy with uh, the work that the board has done um, with the Urban Forestry Division regarding the focus on tree replacements. I think that this board started itself right away um, uh, with uh, the Crenshaw line um, on uh, on uh, kind of exercising the importance of tree replacements and that I think has expanded itself all the way into what is becoming of course the city's sidewalk repair plan so uh, thank you for your uh, for your work on that uh, I'll start with um, Commissioner Rodriguez and then I'll go to Commissioner Penning Tim um, first of all I with all the challenges that we have with our trees in this city, from the diseased to the removals that we're going to have to endure with um, with uh, the sidewalk program and just you know everything that we've been contending with for these last several years, I just wanted to publicly say you know I I know I had the the greatest opportunity to go spend some time with our teams, uh, the crews that we do have out there in the field that are being so incredibly responsive, particularly given some of the emergency uh, situations that we've had to uh, respond to in a very timely manner. Um, you know, I want to publicly say that, you know, I know I have received a number of compliments about how responsive and how um, just attentive the staff has been out in the field, especially given the circumstances that they've had to endure these last several years, uh, being under-resourced. Um, several community members have reached out <coughs> and just been so complimentary about the professionalism, about the uh, just kind nature of the staff. It, 
given these circumstances, I just want to say that I, I for one, really r appreciate that and value that, um, that attitude and that sense of service that the, that the crews have had given the uh, enormous challenges that they've had to endure with the lack of staffing. And so I uh, just, you know, I'm always just so appreciative of that work and that level of care and service uh, because it is something that we have to be reflective of that we are uh, here to be mindful of the services that we're here to provide for the, for the constituents, for the residents of the city. And so when the staff is an extension of that and is as responsive as they have been and has been so um, just, you know, uh, just concerned about the customer service. I'm just so uh, incredibly appreciative of that. And so I just want to say thank you so much. You know, you know, when I was out with the crews, I, uh, you know, they were, they were just happy that they had someone there to even just share that. So the more that we can express that to them, um, you know, and let them know how much we value and appreciate them, I, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rodriguez. Uh, Commissioner Repenning. Tim, thank you for the report and uh, for everything you guys are doing. I um, <clears throat> am also really excited that uh, you guys are having the opportunity to put some of the resources back in place that were lost during the, uh, the, the, I guess the, the recession, um, the hard times that that you went through. And uh, you know, I'm a big um, fan of trees. I think that uh, dollar for dollar, they're one of the best investments we can make in terms of not just the environmental impact, but uh, of overall livability in our neighborhoods. Um, I think they just make such a big difference. And, um, you know, we're trying to plant more, but we also need to maintain. And, um, you know, we have some challenges there. Uh, we, we've put them on paper with the uh, State of the Street Trees report, and I want to uh, uh, just appreciate the work that went into that. Um, I've been part of, uh, with Ron, some of the, the briefings with council um, kind of preparing people for the discussion we're going to have on uh, an in-lieu fee for tree replacements. Um, and I think that there really is consensus uh, among our city's leaders that we, we need to get focused again on our, our, our street trees. And um, so I think we have, we have that opportunity coming up. And I know with <coughs> you, with Ron, with everyone, you guys are so passionate about what you do and you're, you have such expertise um, that we can uh, make some really great things happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Davis. Uh, Ryan, I want to <clears throat> thank you for, first of all, your leadership. I have been here, uh, I guess, going on, what, almost three years or so, and I have been able to see you grow and develop into the leadership position you currently have, and I thank you for your leadership and your report today. And overall, in general, I thank the department for their stewardship over trees, I've learned so much and have begun to have such a greater appreciation for what trees do in our society as a result of your presentations. And know that we know that you, uh, in your stewardship, are responsible for managing uh, the country's largest urban forestry. And that is no small feat. Uh, you've had to deal with both internal challenges in terms of staffing <clears throat> and external cha uh, challenges in terms of really trying to more effectively manage issues that our president talked about in a governmental challenges such as how do we get tree replacements in projects where we're having to work with other government agencies and you guys have been very efficient and effective at watching the store to make sure that the tree replacements are implemented appropriately and I want you to know that's greatly appreciated and finally I want to say that there are also great opportunities in contracting for our small business community and I guess large business community for those who have large businesses who are trimming trees and so that is important to our council members and important to the employment opportunities here in the city as also I'm excited in conclusion that uh, the technology that you talked about will help you to be even more efficient and bring you up to date uh, with the state of the art technology and continuing to be effective for the city of Los Angeles. So thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your stewardship. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Nothing further. Well, the oral report will be received. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. I just want to say one last thing. A uh, slogan we had in the uh, military was, we will overcome all obstacles. Thank you. Uh, agenda item special, we have a special one. 
uh, before we adjourn, uh, motion, Bureau of Street Services, recommending that the bid receipt date for the production of recycled asphalt concrete. Ms. Stern, would you wait one moment before you leave? Thank you. Uh, Bureau of Street Services recommending that the bid receipt date for the production of recycled asphalt concrete from reclaimed asphalt pavement, which was scheduled to be received on March 14, 2016, Monday, at the Bureau of Street Services offices, be extended to 11 a.m. on Tuesday, April 5, 2016. Mr. Spindler, you have a card on Special Agenda 1. Right. <gasps> for all the people. <gasps> that are going to breathe all that asphalt concrete dust. All the people with breathing conditions like asthma. Well, you're going to be, you're going to take the bid on March 14, 2016, but you know that the city council comes back March 15th. So you know when you put it over to April 5th, that people like me aren't going to come to your meeting so that you can have a better chance of doing this without me being here talking about this. Now, we can't breathe from all the asphalt poisoning going on. You could go up into the Antelope Valley where I was yesterday on the Highway 138, and you could put this this fucking plant up there 69 miles away from all of us here in the city so we don't have to be contaminated and have to breathe the asphalt dust. But you're going to put this in CD14 with all those Latinos because you don't give a shit about those Latinos. So you're going to let them breathe all that dust rather than put it away outside the city. So vote no on this project. But again, you don't give a shit about this. And in 20 years, you'll be sued in a class action lawsuit for environmental damage. Because every time you do shit like this, you wind up poisoning the air and the water. But you're just too fucking dumb to understand what I've been saying. So I probably will or will not be here April 5th. So please, for people that have asthma and breathing, don't open up a fucking plant for recycled asphalt so the kids can breathe so they don't have to sound like me wheezing my mom the fucking ass off with all the lung damage from all your contamination. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spender. Mr. Mose, on the continuance of the bid receipt date for what is to be an upgrade of an existing facility? No, um, good morning, everyone. Keith Mose, Bureau of Street Services. This is just for the recycled asphalt contract uh, for the metro region to supply material to the metro region and to the uh, uh, Bureau of Street Services resurfacing crews. We uh, applied as far as put the bid out on the business assistance virtual network, and three contractors showed up All American Asphalt, Vocal Materials, and Manhole Adjusting Contractor. And we uh, discussed at the pre-bid meeting as far as the changes to the contract and the bid specs. And from that, one contractor requested additional time to uh, have the contract reviewed by his corporate office, and he asked for the additional time. And that's why we came back to request additional time to move from March 14th to April 5th. Okay. Any questions at all? Okay. Is there a second to my, uh, uh, to my motion that we adopt a special one by Commissioner Davis? Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt special one. Uh, we'll, any problem sending it forthwith? We'll spend special one forthwith. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Before we adjourn, uh, I have an adjourning motion regarding the uh, unfortunate untimely death of a very special woman to the city of Los Angeles and indeed to our country. Um, uh, this past week, uh, the former provost of the University of Southern California and now former president of Cornell University, Elizabeth Garrett, uh, passed away of colon cancer. Um, I met Beth um, when we were both 17 years old. Uh, we were um, in a scholarship program in our undergraduate college at the University of Oklahoma together um, and um, spent much of our freshman year working with that group of, of 30 students at the time and continued working together all the way through uh, student government. Of course, uh, no surprise to many, Beth Garrett became the student body president uh, uh, in, in our senior year at the University of Oklahoma. We 
uh, spent a lot of time uh, in various uh, debate activities um, over our years in college and uh, in projects like the Collegiate Model United Nations. Uh, we both went to law school at the same time. Beth went to the University of Virginia Law School. Uh, no surprise that uh, she graduated top in her class, received one of the most coveted um, clerkships in the country when she clerked for the United States Supreme Court as one of uh, former Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall's um, final clerks. Uh, she then went on to teach law at the University of Virginia, uh, at Harvard University, and at the University of Chicago. Those were the decade, the 10 years or so that Beth and I were in less contact. Uh, but in 2003, she came to Los Angeles at the University of Southern California as a uh, professor at USC Law School, and it didn't take long for leadership at the University of Southern California to see what an amazing asset and talent um, uh, Beth Garrett uh, was. She quickly rose to the ranks of a provost, the first woman to be provost at the University of Southern California. That is the second person in command at the university, uh, working obviously directly with the president, um, and a big part of taking USC to the, the point where it was as a leader in the nation, as one of the top fundraising universities, uh, private or public, in the country. And of course, to Beth's talent, she was also in charge of uh, academic affairs. And Beth was a regular, uh, the most regular recruiter um, for the university of some of the best academic talent. Uh, that, and I know she was very happy the day that U.S. News and World Report finally had USC above UCLA. I think it was even a year that they beat uh, UCLA in football, um, which also coming from the University of Oklahoma was a big part of, of Beth's life. Uh, she um, uh, uh, was, uh, could regularly be seen. I know when she moved from the law faculty to Brigham Provost, uh, for her that meant moving from pretty good seats on the Coliseum to a, a place right on the field. She always had a field pass. And you could see Beth regularly talking to not just a donor that she was talking to about the University of Southern California or a, a potential professor or dean that they wanted to recruit to the University of Southern California, but Beth Garrett was always talking to the players too. Uh, after a play, um, you know, somebody that the players actually um, knew themselves, their provost, she was a lifelong, diehard Democrat. Um, but Beth, for her entire life, obviously coming from Oklahoma, um, always found ways to work well in Republican administrations as well. She was um, uh, a, a member of the, uh, for a long time, the FPPC, the Fair Practices Political Commission um, here in California. She was an advisor on tax policy, um, first to George W. Bush and subsequently to President Obama. Um, she, um, uh, the announcement, uh, uh, and that was the last time I spoke to her, was soon after the announcement before she took the job at Cornell. Um, and interestingly enough, and a bit ironically, the one thing that she said she was uh, panicked about was the fundraising obligations at Cornell, which when she's one of the best fundraisers in the country, I found that, that, found that a bit amusing. And Cornell, an Ivy League school that in many ways uh, could obviously sell itself. But uh, upon reading about her, her, her death, um, I, I, I realized that, and wasn't a surprise to read, that Beth had already started reforms at Cornell University. Um, uh, one of the most notable was that she was uh, going to consolidate a number of colleges that were related to the study of business into a college of business at Cornell. And it had gotten the rancor of uh, some folks at the university so much that there was a protest vote to censure the administration, um, and they ended up having to postpone that vote um, in honor of her passing away. Um, that demonstrates um, that not only was she there to reform and always in her own way uh, willing to change what already was one of the best universities in the country to improve it, um, she was diagnosed um, only a month ago. and. Um, and, um, and, and, the, and treatment did not, did not uh, succeed, obviously, at Weill Cornell Medical Center. Uh, but uh, because she's such um, a, 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 and she was only 52 years old, um, 
we always talked, uh, our friends that knew her, we also lived next door uh, in college for our sophomore and junior years. Um, and some of our friends from back then, you know, when somebody dies, I don't know if it's social media or whatever, it forces some of you to be back in communication. We were in communication when Beth took the job at Cornell, um, predicting this was not her last job. Um, we knew that a, a presidential administration would tap her for something even greater. Unfortunately for our country, it did end up being Beth's last job. And she passed away after only eight months as, um, as the president of Cornell University. Um, but I, it's important uh, for us to uh, send this memory of adjournment in her honor to her parents, um, who both have survived her. And uh, that's a tough thing to bury a child, of course, and still re reside in Oklahoma City. So with that, uh, I would like to adjourn in Beth's honor. Thank you, everyone.